Today I'm going to show you simple techniques to use with a Harbor Freight welder to get the best results with your welds. The settings I used for most welding, I have this set to max and about five on the wire speed. If you're burning through your material, you'll have to set it to minimum. That'll reduce the amperage. But I leave it on maximum most of the time because of how cold this welder is just in general. For this machine, it's really important that you clean both the base metal and the area that your ground clamp is going to be attached to. One thing to keep in mind about the wire this machine uses is that it has a really low deposition rate. What that means is a lot of the wire here isn't going to end up in the weld and it's gonna end up as spatter around the weld. That's another reason why we keep the wire speed so high so that we have enough material building up the weld puddle and not just going out into spatter. And when I weld, I want my angle to be straight down at the piece and angled back against the direction I'm moving. So I'm gonna be moving along this way. I'm gonna angle it back about 15 to 20 degrees. And when I start my weld, I'm gonna pull the trigger and I'm gonna move side to side from each piece until I've built up a big enough starting weld. Then I'm gonna slowly move across, moving from side to side each piece very slowly. And I'm gonna watch the weld as I move across and make sure I see it consistently moving across as a puddle going across the weld. I don't wanna see the puddle going in a zigzag motion from each piece. I want it to be one consistent puddle moving across. So now to clean off the weld, I'm going to use a wire wheel instead of a slag hammer or a wire brush because the slag on these welds is really adhered to every little crevice of this weld. So just using a wire wheel, I'll be able to get all of that off really efficiently. And it also takes a lot of the spatter with it too. It may not be the prettiest weld, but it's a lot better than a weld that was drug straight along. And that weaving allowed the metal to melt both of the plates and fuse them together properly. The weld didn't go all the way through the plate, but if you're welding something that needs to be structurally sound, you could take an angle grinder and just grind a groove into the back of the weld and put another weld in the back of it. I hope this helped, and if you have any other questions about this welding machine, be sure to let me know in the comments. If you see anything in this video that you think you might want to use for your welding projects, I'll leave links to everything I use in the description. 